Hello, my name is Prashant and in today's session, I will be discussing about the derivative and my topic will be geometrical meaning of dy by dx. So let's start the session. We all know how to calculate dy by dx for any given function. Suppose we have a function y is equal to f of x. Then dy by dx or derivative of this function. So it is d by dx of y means derivative of y with respect to x. That can be written as d by dx of f of x. So it is nothing but f dash x. That is the derivative. Okay. We all know how to calculate derivative. But my question is, do we really know the meaning of derivative? That what this derivative is actually representing. So the topic is geometrical meaning of dy by dx. Geometrical meaning of dy by dx. Like for any function y is equal to f of x, if we are calculating the derivative, what that derivative will actually represent. So to understand this better, I'll take you to the Cartesian plane, which is x and y plane. Suppose this is x and y axis. Now, the graph of y is equal to f of x, y is equal to f of x is given to us. Suppose this is the graph. This is the graph of the function y is equal to f of x. This is the graph of y is equal to f of x. I have taken two points on this graph. This is point A and this one is point, let's say B. Point A and B are lying on this graph. So coordinates are, let's say x1 comma y1 for point A and for point B it is x2 comma y2. If I join these two points, if I join these two points with the help of this straight line, this line will be a chord for this graph this line you can say it's a chord or if you extend it from both the sides you will get a secant also so this line a b is a chord of this graph now if you want to find the slope or gradient of this chord so the formula will be y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 now a few constructions are required here so from this point A, I'll drop a perpendicular to x-axis and from point B also, suppose this is the perpendicular onto the x-axis. This is AM perpendicular to x-axis. This is BN perpendicular to x-axis. Now, you see this part, this length, this is the origin. So OM is actually x1. And if you calculate the distance from O to N, that distance is x2. Because ON is actually the distance of point N from the Y axis. So it has to be the X coordinate of point N. So X2 is ON. Now what will be this distance? MN will be ON minus OM. So very clearly we can write that this part will be X2 minus X1. For the sake of simplicity, let's have this thing as delta X or del X. Corresponding change in Y. So for that, I'll drop one perpendicular. I'll drop one perpendicular from this line A to this BM, suppose this is AP. AP is perpendicular to this BN line. Now, you see this distance of point B from the X axis. So it will be the Y coordinate of that point. It means this part will be Y2. Similarly, AM, AM is the distance of point A from X axis. So it has to be the Y coordinate of point A. That will be Y1. So the corresponding change in Y will be this part that is bp so this will be y2 minus y1 and that is del y or delta y okay <clears throat> so that is the slope of chord a b a and b both line on this function y is equal to f of x now i want to minimize this gap i want to minimize this del x this del x means this length only. So I want to minimize this length. So what I'll do, I'll take the limit of this del x tends to zero. Suppose I need to find the limit of this part. So I'll, I'll calculate limit del x tends to zero of del y over del x. 
this thing is nothing but del y over del x only del y over del x because y2 minus y1 is del y and x2 minus x1 is del x so limit del x tends to zero now see what this will represent this del x tends to zero means this point n is coming closer towards this point m this n is coming closer to point m because this this gap is reducing it means point n is coming closer to point m now in the way suppose this point n is coming here so if point n is coming here Point B will also change the position. Point B will come closer to point A. Point B will come closer to point A because this gap is reducing. It means N is coming closer to M and similarly point B is also coming closer to point A. So if this point N is here, point B will come here. In that case, what will be this chord? This chord will be AB. Green color line will be the new chord. But we will not stop here. My goal is to make this del x tends to zero. We cannot make it zero, but we can we can uh, take the limit of this del x tends to zero because we want to minimize this gap. Now, this point B is coming closer towards this A. Point B can come here, it can come here. There will be one limiting condition, one limiting case when this del x tends to zero, then what will happen in that case? In that case, point B and point A both will coincide. So there will be one condition when B and A both are coinciding. So in that case, this tangent will be, this, this chord will actually be a tangent to this point A. Okay. When this B is coming closer to point A, there will be one case when B and A both will coincide. In that case, this chord AB will be this, this blue color line, which will represent a tangent, tangent at A. So this means it is dy by dx, which will be the slope of tangent at point A. If we'll calculate this dy by dx at point A for which the coordinates are known to us, suppose x1 comma y1. So this thing will be giving you one numerical value and that numerical value will be slope of this tangent, which is represented in blue color. Now, this is point A at which the tangent is known to us. So we can find the slope of this tangent with the help of this dy by dx. So I'll, I'll write the conclusion for any given function y is equal to f of x, dy by dx will be the slope or gradient of all the tangents, all the tangents drawn to the curve. This means if you have a function and if you are calculating the derivative, so dy by dx will represent one relation between x and y or sometime it may be constant also. So that relation will be actually the slope or gradient of all the tangents possible to that curve. What you have to do? Suppose you want to find the slope of tangent at any particular point P. Any particular point P, suppose that P is having the coordinates X, alpha and beta. So that point P must lie on the graph first. If you want to find the slope of tangent at that particular point, so you must have uh, the coordinates of that point. Okay. So first you have to calculate dy by dx. It will be a function. It will be a relation in X and Y. And in that relation, if you are putting X equal to alpha and Y equal to beta, you will get one numerical value. You will get one numerical value. So that numerical value will be slope of tangent at point P. So that is the geometrical meaning of dy by dx. Okay. Now we can verify this thing. We can verify this by taking a example, taking an example. So I'll take one example. So in, it, in this example, what I'll do, I'll take one a random graph, a random equation. Suppose y is equal to fx. And I'll take it as any random thing. So x square plus 4x plus 7. It's a quadratic polynomial. So the graph will be parabola. The graph will be is parabola. For this parabola, you can see the leading coefficient is positive. Leading coefficient means the coefficient of x square. So a is positive means this parabola will be opening upward. So first I'm going to plot this parabola. And after that, I'll take one point which lies on this parabola. I'll, I'll write the equation of that tangent at that particular point. And then I will calculate the slope of that tangent. 
Okay. I'll calculate the same thing with the help of derivative also and with the help of graph also because we are going to verify that whether dy by dx at a point is representing the slope of tangent at that point or not. Okay. So first I'll go with the derivative and I'll calculate slope of tangent at any particular point. Okay. So I'll, I'll find one point which is lying on this graph first. Suppose I'll take x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1 means f of 1, that is y at x equal to 1, which will be 1 square plus 4 plus 7. So this will come 12. Means there is a point P, which is 1 comma 12. It lies on the graph, lies on the graph. It means we can find the slope of tangent at this point because this point is lying on the graph. We can draw tangent only if the point is lying on the graph. So I'll go with the derivative first. dy by dx will be 2x plus 4. And if I calculate this dy by dx at point P, now this is having only x coordinate. So only point 1 will be required here. So 2 plus 1, that will be 6. Now this thing, which is slope of tangent, slope of tangent at point P. Now I'm going to verify this by actually plotting this graph. See, I'm going to plot this parabola first. So for plotting, we require a few things like x intercept, y intercept. Okay. So for this parabola, suppose the equation is x square plus 4x plus 7. And I'm going to equate this with 0 because I need some x values to check whether it is having x intercept or not. So for this quadratic equation, I'll find the discriminant first. Discriminant will be b square minus 4 is c. So that will be 16. b square will be 16 minus 4 into a into c. So this is 16 minus 28 that will be minus 12. So unfortunately it is having no x intercept because discriminant is equal to 0 means this y will never be equal to 0 at any real value of x. This means this, this graph is not passing through the x axis or it is not touching the x axis. When discriminant will be equal to 0, this graph will touch the x axis and if the disc discriminant is more than 0, you will be having two different x intercepts. So unfortunately, this graph is not passing through x-axis. Now I'll calculate the y-intercept. To calculate y-intercept, I need to put x equal to 0. So at x equal to 0, y will be 7. Right? So this graph uh, may have this type of shape. It may have this type of shape also. So it's very important to find that uh, where is the vertex of this parabola. Vertex means this point. So we have to find the vertex first. Then only we can decide that whether this graph will be available in first quadrant or it will be like this. Okay. So we'll find the vertex first and then we will plot it actually. We have a formula to find the vertex and I'm not going with conic section concept. I'll go with a quadratic equation concept only. So vertex for this parabola will be minus b by 2a and minus d by 4a. So minus b means minus 4 by 2a. So that is 2 into 1, then minus d by 4a. So d is minus 12, that will be plus 12 minus d by 4a. So 4 into 1. Now the coordinates of vertex will be uh, minus 2 comma 3. It means this is lying in quadrant. So we can plot this graph actually. I will take the uh, Cartesian plane again. Suppose this is our Cartesian plane. X axis, this one is negative X, this is Y axis, and this is the origin. Now, for this graph, the vertex is lying at minus 2, comma 3. So this graph is not drawn to scale. Suppose this is minus 2, comma 3, or it will be closer to this Y axis because X is minus 2 and Y is 3. Let's have little up. Okay, so this is the vertex and y intercept is equal to 7. So this point is 3, y intercept is 7. So it will it will pass through somewhere, somewhere here. So suppose this is the graph or at this point, it should look like this. Suppose this is the graph of this parabola. It will not have any x intercept because there is no real value of x for which this y is equal to 0. Now, at the same point, P1, 12, at the same point, because we have calculated this point, P is lying on the graph. So point P1, 12, it will lie in quadrant 1. And because Y value is 12, so this point will be 
higher than this point. This point is having coordinate 0, 7. So five units more means this point A will lie. So this point P will lie somewhere here. So I'll draw a tangent at this point P, which is <clears throat> 1, 12. One tangent at this point, and then we will verify that this tangent is having the slope 6 or not. Okay. So I'll draw a straight line at this point. which will represent the tangent to this parabola. So tangent can be drawn like this only. This is the tangent at point P. Now this line, which is the tangent, it will, it will just touch the graph at this point. Okay. Now, what will be the slope of this tangent? So to get the slope of this tangent, I need the point of intersection of this line with this X axis. And for that, I require equation of this tangent. Okay. So I'm going to find equation of this tangent. So I'm having this slope six. So with the help of this, I'm going to write equation of tangent. This point is P, suppose this point is R. So equation of tangent P R. Slope is six, so this will be six X minus Y and plus some constant, which is equal to zero. Now this tangent is passing through point one comma 12. This point is passing through one comma 12. So it will satisfy. It means 6 into 1 minus 12 plus k is equal to 0. After simplifying, you can see that k is coming as 6. So equation of this tangent will be 6x minus y and k is plus 6. So this will be plus 6. I have to find the coordinates of this point r. Now point r is having one thing like its y coordinate will be 0 because it is lying on the x-axis. So I'll put y equal to 0 here at y equal to 0. 6x will be minus 6, it means x will be minus 1. So this point r is having coordinates minus 1, comma 0. And clearly it is lying on the negative x-axis. So while calculating, we can verify so many things. Now, the final thing, slope of this line, pr. Slope of this line, which is tangent actually. Slope of this line, pr. So formula will be y2 minus y1. So 12 minus 0, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So that will be 1 minus of minus 1. It means this will be 12 and 1 plus 1 will be 2. So that is 6. Now you can see the slope of this tangent is equal to 6. So the final conclusion of this topic or this session is if you have any function y is equal to f of x, dy by dx will represent the slope of all the possible tangents to that curve. Means in the formula of dy by dx, if you are putting the values of x and y, you will get one numerical value. That numerical value will represent the slope of tangent at that particular point, provided that point must lie on the graph. All right. I hope this is clear. We'll see you next time. Thank you.